We're all good. Awesome. Kirby Jet, I'm gonna just gonna D DM you fan art of Booga. If you if you keep it up, you're on thin ice, buddy. <laughs> Alright. Let's see what's going on. I'm just kidding. Or am I? Eric finds himself held in a cell, but soon escapes with the help of Hilija, the sweet-natured slime he meets there. The two fight their way out of the loathsome lair beyond the bars and emerge into the sunlight at last, only to be accosted by the spectral sentinel Indignus and a horde of horrible monsters. Outnumbered and overwhelmed, Eric gamely goes to work on the enemies arrayed against him, but it soon becomes clear that he's in need of some serious help. Help that Hilija can offer, but at a price. Though it may mean losing the memory of his beloved friends, he accepts anyway and is granted a power that enables him to annihilate the opposition. But just as he's about to finish up by beating Indignus, the power leaves as quickly as it came and a counter blow sends him soaring over the edge and into the clouds below. As he falls, someone calling herself the Seer appears and leaves him with these words, Where there is life, there is hope. He awakens to find himself on an unknown shore, a shadow of his former self, uncertain of who he even is. Lord Robert in the Kingdom of Dreams. Lord Robert. That's not Rab, is it? Mm. That sounds like Rab. Huh? Hey, it looks like Rab, too. Oh. Lol, he's dead. Who, where am I? How did I get here? I can't remember a thing. Neither can Eric. <gasps> well, I guess he's happy with that. <laughs> Jinx! Is that... No, it can't be! King Robert is what he was called? Interesting. <sighs> it is! It's her! Fresh from the pages of the Ogler's Digest, and large as life! He doesn't find this suspicious in the slightest. Ah, I've need the first clue what's going on around these parts. But I reckon I could do worse than ask a lassie here. This isn't suspicious well, to him in the slightest. Rab, what are you waiting for? Shall no hang around forever while you pluck up what little courage you have left? Oh my god. Yoo-hoo! Uh, have you a moment to spare for a sweet, harmless old man, Hen? Harmless, he says. <laughs> I have no other options but to walk straight up to her. Wait, I love his running animation. It's so funny. Alright. Oh, I gotta follow her. Playing tag. Definitely not sus at all. I too find it totally normal to wake up in a white void with a cute looking bunny girl winking at me. That's totally normal. Oh, well, it looks like he's back to being king. Or no, that's the outfit I had him in too. What just happened? So it could be either. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> this looks like the academy. This can he be? But it's Dundrasil. But, but it is. It's Dundrasil. Just as it once was. <laughs> Looking sharp, your majesty. <gasps> is she like a succubus or something? <laughs> oh, my, my old robes. But how? Okay, but you had them. Okay, it's probably not canon what that he had them. What is going on? Would you care to enlighten me, Lassie? <laughs> Walk this way. I don't trust anything that's going on right now, especially when she's sashaying her hips in such a sultry manner. My bunny-eared pal headed off in the direction of the throne room, assuming this is the real Dundrasil Castle. That is. Well, that's as good a place as any to head for, I suppose. I'll see what the folks on the way have to say for themselves. 
Forgive me, your majesty, but I cannot allow you to proceed. There's a private meeting in progress. You're locking the king? I don't think that's how that works, my man. Yeah, no matter what I, I figured. What's the matter, your majesty? You look like you've seen a ghost. Anyway, shouldn't you be heading for the throne room? You have an important guest, and as I understand it, if you're late, the chief minister will have your guts for garters. I am the king. Oh my god, look at this sprint. <laughs> look at him go. <laughs> this is so amazing. I love it. I love his running animation. They did such a good job with it. Feeling like peckish, your majesty. Off to the kitchen on one of your snack hunts. Well, I'll tell you not your business, you being king at all, but I'd stay up here if I were you. One of the ministers informs me there's something very important afoot. What? I am the king, and I go where I please. That's how this works. Chase down the children. If I'm good at practice hard, I'll grow up to be as big and strong as Sir Irwin. Won't I, your majesty? Yeah. Are you busy, your majesty? When you finish whatever you're doing, let's play hide and seek again. That's cute. I like that. Why are you running? Why am I running? Because it's so much fun. Good day to you, your majesty. It's another peaceful day in the wonderful kingdom of Dundrasil, and we owe it all to your enlightened rule. Now to business. Oh, this is a save point. I didn't even realize. Sure, why not? It's only been like five minutes, but here, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Your Majesty, please wait. One of the ministers was looking for you. Said you should head to the throne room. I like how everybody's telling the king what to do. So the throne room is through that door over there. If you head inside and turn left, you'll find. Oh, it's you, Your Majesty. Well, you don't mean to need me telling your way about your own place. You'll have to forgive me. I'm new here, you see. Boop. Hey, look. Nice throne. Good day, Your Majesty. The chief minister is waiting for you in front of the throne. Just head out straight in and you'll see him. Eh, fuck it. Who are you? Or is that like a maid? Pr Princess Eleanor would tear strips off me if I let anyone into her private chambers. You just missed her, actually. I wonder where she was off to. I've heard he's finally gonna do it. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Oh, your majesty, we were just discussing, um, nothing. Nothing at all. He, he. Suspicious. Long live King Robert, Roberto. Ah, there you are, your majesty. I've been looking for you everywhere. You must remember me telling you that you had an important audience scheduled. It's almost time. Hurry on over to your throne and prepare yourself. You've no business of the queen's throne just now. Okay, fine, fine. Let's have a little seat. A little pop squat. <gasps> but... I trust you were well, father. So that's Harold's parents. Eleanor, Erwin, it, it really is you. And, and you're young again. What's going on? You're obviously in a dream. Your Majesty, please forgive my insolence in seeking a personal audience with you today. I come before you not as the head of the princess's honor guard, but as my own man. I mean, um, very well. State your business. Uh, you well, uh, you see, the, uh, the, 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 the thing is, I, uh, He wants to marry Eleanor, uh, we got it. Uh, I, uh, wow, he's really stumbling <laughs> over his words here. Uh, <laughs> I wish to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Erwin. And though I am but a soldier, and all too aware of my own lowly position, nevertheless I must persist. For there is one thing of which I am certain. My sword arm is steadfast, and my heart unwavering. There is no man alive who will love, honor, and protect your daughter as I can. Oh. Your Majesty, I place my fate in your hands. Will you allow me to continue to serve and protect your daughter, not as the head of her honor guard, 
but as her dutiful and loving husband. What if I just say no right now? It's a dream, so fuck it, no. <gasps> Please, your majesty, I beseech you. Will you grant the wish of one who would gladly lay down his life if it would prevent a single hair on the princess's head from coming to harm? No. <gasps> Please, your majesty, I beseech Why you. Why do they even give you, you the illusion the of, of choice? <gasps> Please, your majesty. Fine. But thou must. Vice's favorite phrase. Uh, I can hardly turn you down after that little performance. Come on, laddie. And to tell you the truth, I always had an inkling you two might one day be wed. Oh, father. Ignore the fact that I said it's up to you, yeah, or Harold dies. Don't disappoint hey, it's fine. me. We're probably yeah. better off. Thank you. Your Majesty. Thank you. Ignoring the yeah, there we go. Do you when are you gonna realize that this is a dream? Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> Ah! Crevens, mm. where do you spring from, lassie? And where's everybody gone? <laughs> Did you enjoy your little trip down memory lane? Well, it's not over yet. Are you going to force him to relive the day that Dundrasil fell? No, you're still here. What are you doing here at a time like this? What's that? Just in the middle of giving Queen Eleanor and King Erwin permission to marry. Are you sure you're quite all right? It's to be expected, I suppose. The lucky father-to-be himself rushed out in a panic not too long ago. Honestly, the both of you are just are as bad as one another. Okay, so now we're getting ready to for Harold's birth. Is everything all right? You're looking a wee bit befuddled. What do you say? King, Queen Eleanor and King Erwin lost forevermore. Oh, come on now, it's the nerves talking, that's all. Speaking of the nerves, the father-to-be seems to be more than a little jumpy himself. He went flying out of the throne room not long ago like a man possessed. Oh, well, there you are, Lord Robert. I was hoping I might have the chance to speak with you about something before the child was born. Before the child was born? Well now, so it's the day of my grandson's birth, is it? Now there's a thing. Your Majesty, sorry lad, you were saying there was something you wanted to discuss. Aye, it's the child's name. I've been having trouble thinking of anything suitable. So much trouble that it's been distracting me from everything else, if I'm honest. I was wondering if you might see your way to reprising your role as king for a wee while so I can have some time to think it over. Sure. Thank you so much. You'll not have much to do, I promise. There are just two items on the agenda for today. The first is something you're more than used to. Receiving those who seek a royal audience and giving them counsel, the chief minister will be on hand to help you with the most pressing issues. Second is to make the rounds of the castle and assist anyone who needs your aid. The idea of the king aiding his subjects directly was, of course, something you yourself initiated during your reign. I'll be by the fountain downstairs. It's where I do my best thinking. Once you've taken care of the day's business, please come and find me. I'm truly grateful to you for agreeing to do this. So now I've got to go and tell everybody what's going on. We'll recreate the Fable 3 throne scene. Yeah, okay. That looks like Snorri. Use my wisdom. Your Majesty, let me first express to you my gratitude for granting me this audience. I've traveled all the way from the Kingdom of Sifelheim to seek it. Alright, Snorri. The matter I wish to bring before you today has been greatly exercising the ruler of my land. He very much desires to seek the counsel of the Crown of Dundersil, Paragon of Peace and Prosperity. Gone. Regards a royal treasure that's been handed down from generation to generation of our royal line. It is known as the Blue Orb, and alas, it has vanished, presumed stolen. King Gustav has had every means, has used every means at his disposal to try and identify the thief and recover his most precious heirloom, but to no avail. 
However, a list of likely culprits has been identified, four to be precise. Sadly, there is insufficient evidence to conclusively identify the thief, and so we have, find ourselves at an impasse. So you need to whittle it down. You know clear about means to do so. First thing is to identify the likely motive. What reason might a person want to get their mitts on the orb? Pry for the money. Consider the matter the means. Can't just walk off in the street and help yourself to the pride of the royal treasure house, so it means... Probably a, a lock picker. It's a professional thief who did it for the money. So what I recommend doing is lining up the suspects, telling them that it turns out the blue orb isn't worth a thing, and taking a good luck, lar, good hard look at their faces when you do so. Once they hear that they risk everything for a useless bauble that isn't worth a penny, the thief's face will turn to thunder, you can be sure of it. A marvelous display of deductive reasoning. With your blessing, I shall return to Stiffelheim. Sure. Must commend you on your wise counsel. Your advice will doubtless lead to the unmasking of the rogue who stole the treasure. Next matter. Do, 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 do. It's you, yourself, okay. The Sultan of Galopolis salutes the mighty kingdom of Dundrasil and all its people and sends this, a missive penned by his most exalted hand. Your Majesty, I trust that this message finds you well. Word of the continued triumphs and glories of your kingdom continue reaches us on a daily basis. In truth, I write seeking your counsel for this very reason. As you may know, the Sultanate has suffered a prolonged heat wave. The land is parched, and we fear for this year's harvest. As a ruler of the a realm of, of plenty, I beseech you share with us the secrets of your prosperity that we might avert disaster. I await your reply by return of Ryder, your humble servant, the Sultan of Galapolis. Hmm. Sounds like they've got themselves in a pretty pickle over there. Let's see what I can do to help. Drought prevention advice. Can't say it's a problem we've ever faced this way. Start with the basics. Uh, unfailingly gracious. How about think outside the box? My dear Sultan, I understand your kingdom is suffering a bout of searingly hot weather. No doubt sales of ice cream and swimsuits are going through the roof. Of course, I do not wish to make light of your predicament. I simply wish to show you that by changing the way you think about something, you can turn a crisis into an opportunity. What I suggest is that you inspire your people to think of radical new ways of cooling down. Leave it to their imaginations and see what they come up with. Hopefully it will involve swimsuits and lots of them. That's the one. Oh god. Yep, sure. Sounds good to me. Uh, Alright, Big Bear. Pugilistic tournaments held regularly in the town of Octagonia, where fighters from all four corners can be to prove their worth. There's no shortage of young hopefuls keen to represent Dundersill in the next grand event of this kind. To that end, I wish to present you with our kingdom's three final candidates. Who better than a fighting man like yourself, Lord Robert, to assess their potential? If it pleases your majesty, could you step forward and pick the one you think might be the champion in the making? Uh... You can make up your mind, will ya? I can't bear some of the things people say about me, you know. I'm not that bad, honestly, so you're gonna choose me or what? Oh well, I suppose I'll have to grin and bear it. God, I hate you. Okay, what do you have to say? I'm afraid I'm not exactly brimming with confidence, Your Majesty, but if you pick me, I'll cross my fingers really, really hard and hope for the best. Yeah, send the, wi the, the wimp. <laughs> Give him his luck. I know the power of luck. The ultimate luck. No send the bear? Well, it's too late now. I'm happy to report this concludes all my royal duties. 
But as I believe King Erwin mentioned, there may be troubled souls elsewhere in the castle require your assistance. May I suggest that you take a little stroll? Oh, but before you depart, allow me to say that it was an absolute pleasure to witness you at work today. Truly, it has been far too long. It's safe to say your kingly judgment is as sharp as it ever was. I did a good job as king. I could be the king. Okay, I probably can't go that way. This door is open now, though. Achoo! Forgive me, your majesty. The maid who brings your dinner dropped a pot of pepper, and now I can't stop sneezing. I just hope none of it drifts into the queen's room. I'm sure she's having a hard enough time of it already. Oh yeah, she is probably very pregante right now. There's a book here. <laughs> An old diary of Rab's. Ever since the day I ceded the throne to young Erwin, the lad has poured his heart and soul into making Dundersil the greatest kingdom it can possibly be. He has never raised as he was never raised as royalty, and I must admit I shared some of my subjects' doubts about whether or not he was truly suited to rule at first. But now I know I made the right choice. He soon gained their trust and respect, and mine as well. The entire nation is united behind him. My dear Eleanor has made a very fine choice of a husband indeed, which means I can get on with enjoying my retirement. Yep, very relaxing retirement, I see. Okay, who else can I help? Who needs old mini king's advice? That way is open. The kids are having fun. Can I play hide and seek with you? You're always known as a wise ruler, one who might, one who knew a thing or two about a thing or two. Well, I was wondering if it might be bold enough to make a small request. If you don't mind, I would very much like to ask you some questions in order to see your formidable intellect at work. We're doomed. So what do you say? Will you indulge me? Sure. Why, thank you. Now, without further ado, let me set you some posers. All I require is that you and your infinite wisdom supply me with a simple true or false. True or false, you, Lord Robert, are in fact the youngest of three brothers. I don't fucking know. Yeah, true. Correct, but that was too easy. Let me give you a stern or... True or false, the purple orb is one of the royal treasures of Sniffleheim. No, that's the blue one. The Drusillian sovereign we use as currency as our kingdom is worth Dr Drusillian... 10 Drusillian shillings. True. Sure. The Sultan of Galopolis has a single son upon whom he dotes excessively. True. I guess that's fair. I don't know if he was born yet or not. True. False. True. False. Final question. In addition to the four great kingdoms that make up Erdria, there was once a fifth. True. The sight of a matchless mind spreading its wings and taking flight. I got a seed of magic. Been both a humbling and inspiring experience, your majesty. I intend to hit the books and memorize yet more obscure trivia. King Erwin and Queen Eleanor always look so happy. Well, that's true love for you. I wish it could happen to me, but I suppose that's happening. Hoping for too much. I cannot wait for the wee ones to be born. For the wee one to be born, I'm getting excited. That is probably very exciting for them. Ugh, there's so many people. Good day. Forgive me for bothering you with such a trifling matter, your majesty, but I have a wee problem I'd very much like to ask your advice about. The truth is, there's someone in the castle has caught my eye, but I cannot muster the courage to tell them how I feel. Anyway, I had an idea, and I know it sounds like I'm out of my tree, but what if they got flowers delivered by none other than yourself? Sure. Now how can I begin to describe my true love, my peach, the apple of my eye, and captor of my heart? Well, they're in the castle, they're wearing green. Oh, and they've got red hair. Good luck. Is it you? Uh, 
<laughs> Did I get it right? The man you gave my flower to has only gone, only gone and offered me a hundred thousand gold coins. I think I just pulled them from the ground because they caught my eye. <laughs> I thought nothing was more precious than true love, but let's face it, I can't turn down that much gold, can I? Alright. Interesting. Well, I guess that all worked out for him. Could be the old, it could have been the old lady too. Okay, there's Prince Ir uh, King Irwin. Was there anybody up here that could have fit the, fit the bill too? You're wearing green, do you have red hair? I guess we'll talk to King Irwin.